week I've been asked to evaluate Chris. Chris, who are you? Okay. Way on the back, keeping a low profile. Good. <laughs> so why don't we start with persuade with power, quote, quote, which is the theme of night nice project Chris is going to present us today. All of you might have heard about JFK, Martin Luther King, even my physics teacher. I know what you might be thinking. All those men have something in common. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, all of them <laughs> persuade with power. And following the footsteps of great men, we'll try to think about Chris as equal. In order to, for him to be able to achieve that, he has to meet certain objectives of the project. And it is highly recommended that he will be able to influence the thinking and behavior, uh, behavior of the audience. It is highly also recommended that he will be able to inflame the interest in, in, of the topic as well. Also, he will need to use the logic and emotions as well to support his position of his, in his presentation. And when you think about it, uh, logic and emotion, so different, it's kind of difficult to put those conflicting things into a single basket. Uh, and the kind of simple example is heart do not really follow logic, and likewise, logic can explain the heart. So from my perspective, it could become quite difficult to uh, do that. Uh, the topic of today's speech uh, Chris is going to deliver is crises. And he'll be particularly focusing on the human factor uh, in terms of, uh, deal, uh, in terms of uh, uh, feeling good in home and, and in his life. And we need to remember to take the perspective that he's been uh, the member of the expat community for the last 50 years. So, uh, probably most likely. <laughs> <laughs> so, most likely, That's we'll talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris. Stands for what? Oh my, oh my god! I'm standing up here, and apparently I'm going to be shot. I have seven minutes. And I hope I do survive. Recently, I took an OMG course. At our ministry, we call them crisis management seminars. We're about to take them in the track of our career. And the first lesson we learned there was by a psychologist. She told us, listen guys, you know what happens to us all, to humans, when we are faced with a crisis, with an unprecedented situation of sheer magnitude that we cannot cope with. There are three forms, three Fs, that will take us all in. Because we are hardwired to react in a certain way. First, fight. <laughs> Second, And the third, bye bye. Mm -hmm. I flee. Now, as she said that, it suddenly dawned on me. It was precisely what I went through when I lived 14 years ago when I traveled through Central America and Guatemala. I was signing up for a trip up a little beautiful volcano. At the beginning, beautiful sunshine, gorgeous weather, just a little steam coming out of the wind. Fifteen guys. Three of us, we were a bit faster. It was 
Pete, the Englishman, Jürgen, the German, and Chris, the Swiss. <laughs> so we're hiking a bit faster. As we approached the top, we actually could barely come close to the tip of the volcano. Woof! Something red came out. <laughs> I thought, beautiful, where's my camera? So, I couldn't take a picture because a split of a second later, something said, bloody hell dangerous. Do one of those threes. Of course, I didn't think, but I was free. Second guy, Jurgen. <laughs> Third guy, Pete, backpack. <laughs> Trying to fend off the rocks. <laughs> Luckily, it was a small, a small, and a small float. Otherwise, none of us would be here. We all survived, but we were deeply shocked. Why were we there in the wrong time? Because we were utterly unprepared. No preparation about it whatsoever. So what we learned through the course of the seminar was, of course, we can go out of our disk operating system. We are not machines, after all. We can learn how to act and react. And to get into that loop, to open the window of opportunity, we have to train. We've got to practice. So who of you knows, in your company, do you have a contingency plan? Mm. Not so many. Not so many, I must say. So one thing I'd like to advise you, go back to your company and talk about that. Because if you don't, you'll see what happens. Now everybody thought I'm going to talk about the Euro crisis, but actually that's a perfect example of what happens. Who would have thought that would be indeed the S-H-I-T? <laughs> Nobody at the onset. It was beautiful. Golden bullions, everybody together, free markets, we can exchange goods and compare prices. Fantastic. Let's do that together. We are so strong. <laughs> now nobody wants it anymore. Because nobody thought about the consequences. What if things go wrong? Now they have to come up with plans. And of course, nobody agrees to a certain denominator. So discuss when the sun is shining about possible threats to your company. Second lesson, you probably have to look at your flow chart and your organizational chart, because in a crisis, you will work completely different. Your crisis again, who is the leader? Everybody watching Germany, but Germany says, no, no, our Bundesland, they know they won't give me the money. Oh, the court will actually intervene, and they say, no, you're not allowed to fund all those southern countries. No, 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 we can't do that. So we have to look at that. Who takes decision in a moment of crisis? Who has the competence? And who has the capabilities? Maybe we have to look for outside, outside help, for experts. Or maybe within your company, you have some cracks that you've never heard of before. Third and very important lesson is, Anybody of you who works in a company like everybody has a say and you can contribute with your ideas beautifully and then you mingle and you have like sort of a consensus in the end? Probably IT, something like that, you know, everybody has to be creative, come up with ideas. Crisis won't work. There has to be a leader, top down, military style. Because why? There is no time. There is no time. And that actually leads me to a beautiful motto. In crisis situations, there is no time. But remember one thing. Let's sit down, because we're in a hurry. You need to take a few minutes to reflect, to ponder up on your next actions. Now, we're not talking only about business, but also private life. Who of you can tell me the difference between a brain stroke and a heart attack? Madame? Oh, you are a scientist anyway. Okay, you count that. All the rest, not very good. Well, you can say, we leave it to the experts. We're in Warsaw, city center, ambulance is probably 10 to 15 minutes away. Those minutes count, ladies and gentlemen. These are precisely the minutes that you can make the change, that you can increase the rate of survival. Because if you know what to do in those first five, seven minutes, the person might survive without problems, <coughs> or he or she might die. So you better check 
what you can do in those situations. It's not much, but you should memorize it. Now I have with me all the time this little leaflet and stickers that I got from an organization that I belong to, and it says precisely what you should do in case I forget. And we also organize staff training for this reason. Now the one thing I would like to tell you, practice, 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 don't be shy. Go back to your organization and improve your skills. Because there's one thing for sure, you can only help if you're able to react. Oh my God, time's up. Thank <laughs> you.